Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is about chiral molecules. If you want to skip to any particular section of this video, you can do so by clicking the timestamps found in the description section below. Please also make sure to subscribe to our channel as this helps out our channel a lot. Okay, let's get to the video. Chirality in molecules arises from the presence of asymmetric carbon atoms. These asymmetric carbon atoms are what is known as a chiral center or a stereocenter. An asymmetric carbon atom is bonded to four different atoms or groups. This allows for different spatial arrangements of these atoms or groups around the central carbon atom. Due to this asymmetry, the molecules and its mirror images cannot be superimposed, making them chiral. You can see here that this molecule cannot be superimposed no matter which way you try to rotate it. Let's rotate this molecule and see. Let's rotate the mirror image of this molecule firstly by 120 degrees. We see that chlorine moves into the page, fluorine comes out of the page, and bromine is on the plane of the page. If we rotate it again slightly anti-clockwise to try and get it to superimpose on the original mirror image, we see that fluorine is now on the plane of the page, bromine is coming out of the page, and chlorine has shifted a little to the right-hand side, but is still going into the page. Now, when we superimpose these, you can see that bromine and chlorine are not able to superimpose on each other. If we were to rotate it again by 120 degrees, we see that fluorine moves into the page, bromine comes out of the page, and chlorine is on the plane of the page. If we rotate it again slightly and clockwise to try and get it to superimpose on the original molecule that we took the mirror image of, we see that bromine is now on the plane of the page, chlorine is coming out of the page, and fluorine has shifted a little to the right-hand side but still goes into the page. Regardless, you see now that bromine and fluorine are not superimposable on each other. The reason we are not able to superimpose is due to the spatial arrangement of atoms around the chiral center. If you try to align the mirror images with each other, no matter how you rotate it, there will always be at least one pair of atoms or groups that are not aligned. This lack of superimposability is a fundamental property of chiral molecules and that is the reason why these molecules and its mirror images are considered distinct compounds despite having the same atoms. I will talk about this a little bit more later in the video. Now, if you contrast it with this molecule, you can see that it can be superimposed if you rotate it 180 degrees. Thus, this is not a chiral molecule. In other words, Chiral molecules are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, just like our left hand and right hand. They are similar in structure, but cannot be perfectly aligned. These non-superimposable mirror images are called enantiomers. Enantiomers are a type of stereoisomer. This means that they are molecules with the same molecular formula and connectivity of atoms, but different in their spatial arrangements. Enantiomers are mirror image isomers of each other that cannot be superimposed onto one another. They are like the left hand and the right hand, going back to the previous analogy. Chirality is important in various biological and chemical processes. Enantiomers of chiral molecules often have different biological activities. For example, some drugs exist in chiral forms and only one enantioma might have the desired therapeutic effect while the other could be inactive or even harmful. A well-known example of a chiral drug is thalidomide. Thalidomide was introduced in the 1950s as a sedative and an anti-nausea medication. 
Unfortunately, during that time, the knowledge about the different properties of its enantiomers was not well understood. Thalidomide was sold as a racemic mixture, meaning that it contained equal amounts of both the left-handed as an S enantiomer and the right-handed as an R enantiomer. It was later discovered that while one enantiomer of thalidomide was effective in alleviating symptoms, the other enantiomer caused severe birth defects when taken by pregnant women. This highlights the importance of learning and understanding chara molecules as well as enantiomers and their chemical and biological properties. And that concludes this video. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please like it and please subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.